No, that was the beginning of it all, 66 for me. You know. Everything was new, you know. We had 35 inch wheels, everybody got out of your way, you know. <laughs> It's just, it was the beginning of things, you know, it was, a, it was a good time. I'm glad to be involved in, in that. Well, I bought it new in 1966. Everybody else in our group had Jeeps and I had to be different. I traded a Corvette in on it. It's a two-hour Stingray. Makes a lot of sense. I wanted something the family could do, you know. They say drag racing can, but it's pretty tough. You get busy down there. And uh, I'm not sorry I ever went into that, but this, the whole family can get involved. When I stopped the four wheel and Jay kind of took over everything, and here he is, here we are. Hey, what's up? This is Harry Wagner from Harry Situations, and we are here today with my 1967 FJ40 Toyota Land Cruiser. So this is a vehicle, one owner, and it's been in the family since new. You're probably thinking, I was not born in 1967. You're right, or 1966 when my father bought this, but it has been in the family ever since. And in many ways, this is like my origin story, at least when it comes to four-wheeling, because as long as I've remembered, I have been in this vehicle. I grew up in the back of it on Fordyce, on the Rubicon. And back then, we didn't have a truck and a tow rig and a trailer, and we are pulling a trailer with this thing. So, you know, now there's overlanding, there's racing, there's rock crawling. I like all of them, and it's because I grew up doing all of them in this vehicle. It is near and dear to my heart and I'm really proud of my father and what he built. He was super innovative back in a time when people weren't swapping in one-ton axles, when people weren't running 36-inch tall tires. It's not bone stock. You know, there's oh, people pay a lot of money for stock Land Cruisers. This is not one of them. My father started modifying it right out of the gate. When I took ownership of it, I actually considered making a bunch of changes and, oh, I want to update it to modern specs. I want to put coilovers on it, and I want to lengthen it, and I want to put an LS engine in it. But I didn't end up doing those things, and I'm really glad that's the case because this is a bit of a time capsule. There's a lot of history associated with it. There's no point in changing everything about it because then it wouldn't have the same history that it's got and that nostalgia factor for me. My name is Harry Wagner. All right, that's right. By the time it had, I owned it two years, it had two motors in it. Toyota doesn't, didn't make a very good motor back in those days. I put a 302 Chevy small block in it out of a Z28, and that ran real, real good, but it didn't run real good off the road because uh, the stroke's too short on them and they just, they don't have the low-end torque. Yeah. The motor I originally put in this car, it was a spare motor for my altered, you know, but that gave enough power and torque and whatever, but too much camshaft, of course, you know, so I yanked that out and put a stock cam in it. It's a big pussycat off the road, you know. That big block had a lot of power to it. It's a 468, and I mean, you can just put a tight torque converter in it, you know, that didn't have a lot of slip and just steer it where you wanted to go and you didn't touch the throttle or anything like that, just, just wallowed through. Cool. I was just gonna say, you know, we had that fifth wheel trailer. I used to hook it on the back of the Land Cruiser. Bumper pull. Bumper pull, up to Meadow Lake, yeah, and then set up the trailer and... Charlie had the machine shop and he was real generous, you know, with uh, using his shop and his time and everything else. Of course, he was a hardcore Jeep. Oh yeah, not always friendly here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. When I, yeah, when I went to those 36s though, so, I mean, it was like, that was a whole new vehicle, you know? Cause, Cause just that inch and a half in the lift, but I like the, the bias ply, cause they spread out that wide. You can get up on snow with that and just wallow right through, as you recall. 
How, how far down did you air those tires? Because I remember more than once you talked about just floating Three right over pounds. the top of that snow. Three or four pounds. But, but you know, you're on the risk of knocking the tires off the Rims. rim, you know. Yeah. And then you'd be in a lot of trouble, you know. You were the first ones in there that year. Most of the time, yeah. 35 is when we started, you know, and everybody thought, oh, God, yeah. And, uh, you know, I got hung up on everything that I came to, you know, but I, you could drive around most of it, you know, I mean, I didn't know how to do that. You know. right. Just trying stuff out, and every once in a while you get somebody with the same bolt pattern and let you put, the, put your tires on, you know. CPIC come out with a 38 and a half. I, I like this tread, and I always like them because they didn't have a stiff side wall and they'd, and they'd pooch out like, you learn that from race cars, you know, but it works on the four wheelers too, you know. Well, I ran them in both ends, and I said, "I oh, can't do that. You're going to break this and break that." And that's the best thing I ever did. That's that's what set that Land Cruiser apart from some Jeep. I was over at CNC Auto Records, and they had a F E350, which is a Ford van, and uh, I discovered that I could cut all all the uh, axle off on one side, so then that, that third member was off to the one side too. So I only had to buy one axle, and that was a big. Right, yeah. I'm sure there was some crazy guy somewhere, you know, that was running 60s, but it wasn't in Toyotas and it wasn't in Sacramento. You know? <laughs> the lockers in in the in the front, I had them in the rear for a little while, and then I put put them in the front also, probably waiting for a couple of paychecks to come. You know? And anyway, then she had to go into town for something, and she, so I unhooked the trailer from the Land Cruiser, and poof, off she goes. I took off a little too fast. Yeah, because <laughs> them, them Detroit's, you know, once they lock up, they stay that way for a while, you know. Scared the heck out of me. And yeah, she was giving it that stuff there, so. <laughs> that was it? Yeah, that, she that uh, it? informed me that she, there'd be no more driving of the Land Cruiser. Did I ever break anything? <laughs> Yes. You name something, I broke it. Windshield 5. Windshield 5, yeah. And some little squirrel in a, in a Jeep came up, and then he says, I'll help you out. And I says, thank you, you know. Threw a chain around his Jeep and around my Toyota. And then he takes off about 40 miles an hour, you know, and he's laughing and everything. Because, you know, it's a big deal if you can pull, put somebody else's rig on the hook and pull it into the camp, you know, you're the big man, you know. So we had a little talk about that, too. You know, so. A bunch of us, uh, well, Charlie Reeves, you know, he owned the, the machine shop where we did all our work. Anyway, uh, he was up there, uh, well, he did, yeah, we, between the bunch of us, we had four, four rods of 70, 18. Everybody put their glasses together with a zip tie, you know. How many sunglasses, how many sunglasses did you do? Three pair of sunglasses. Right? Three pair of sunglasses. Yeah. And he welded it back on, I drove it home, you know, so. <laughs> That was uh, that was on uh, Sierra Trek. Yeah, that Sierra happened. Trek. Windshell five, I think. Yeah. Did you ever have concerns how about how heavy that Jeep was compared to some of the others with that big block in it and you yeah, know, stuff. Toyotas are heavy until you start looking at later model Jeeps, you know. Yeah. I mean, it used to be that Toyota there was about five grand, you know. So is that not considered heavy anymore? Well, if you got all the right stuff, it's not, you know. It's just a matter of getting a package with everything that works, you know. Uh, it was wonderful for me, and <laughs> I, my one regret I had is I didn't let you drive more when you were younger, you know. I think that was it. Rusty, you were having a lot of fun and it, it worked out well for us because when when we were going through Sierra Trek, Harry wasn't old enough to drive M most of the time. You love driving. I remember there was always something else Rusty was going to do to it. There was never, there was always some sort of improvement or modification. Rusty tried, was always innovative and um, yet I never worried too much about anything we are always strapped in I think we were and um, it was it was how we went camping when we were gonna go camping that's how we went the Toyota was part of it the first few years were in a tent and then yeah we pulled the we pulled the trailer with the Land Cruiser and that was a little intimidating to me but that darn engine in it was so big that it, it did all right we had a lot of adventures we went out 
and did a lot of fun things. We did Sierra Trek every year, I think every year for 25 years straight. I don't remember us ever getting winched. You were always the one that was winching someone else. You know, I never did get to go through Rubicon. Well, we got through part of it. I think Harry was about maybe 12 years old. Rusty, not uncommon. You know, there was some modification he wanted to do to the Land Cruiser. Probably worked until one or two at the night. We got up early and headed off towards Rubicon. There were about four or five vehicles. Some snow on the ground. We were gonna take it from Tahoe down, the backside. And um, we got into the, we got into some snow, and then we also the road going in had a lot of mud, and we couldn't we couldn't tell how deep it was, so uh, so we headed off the off the small road and uh, ended up hitting some snotty mud or something, and ended up rolling over on the side. Yeah, I think back now, and I think probably it's a culmination of no sleep on your part and just... Oh, yeah, my it. hands are frozen to the yeah. steering wheel. At any rate, <laughs> it's probably not something you even want to talk about, but I do remember... Totally so. forgot it. So now I can claim I belong to the Upside Down Club and uh, never have been through, never have been through Rubicon. So anyway, everybody was pretty much all right. We had, we had one person get a couple of cuts and stuff, but um, we were pretty much... We were, we were all right. I remember you saying that you wanted something nobody else had. And Land Cruisers, 67 Land Cruisers weren't floating yeah, around. Yeah, people Sacramento. would stop you along the side of the road and ask what it was. You know. No, the first Chevy I put in after I took a six out was one of those Toyota trans transmissions. You know, well, that's not the way to go neither, you know. Yeah. So I backed that out and I think the next Next one I had, and it was a 302, was, uh, the Z28, and a 302, and, and uh, I think I did go to Turbo uh, 350, you know? Yeah. And then that didn't work. I mean, that worked good. I liked the gear ratios and everything, but I uh, ended up putting a Turbo 400 in it and ended all that stuff. So that's the thing that's the biggest challenge. I've seen you like overcome a lot of stuff. The axles were the neatest thing, just fitment wise and getting that big block in there. I mean, they'll go in there, but it's it's the fitment. So you have to put like the short water pump and that radiator. I mean, back in the day, you, you'd have to like cut the headlights out and stuff to try to get stuff like that. So definitely, uh, definitely a challenge on uh, the fitment on that stuff. Yeah, that thing, you, you stop it and let it idle for five minutes and boy, I tell you gets pretty warm. Yeah. yeah, and that's a tough thing too. You know, back in the day, they weren't doing a lot of like the cooler air intake and stuff like that, where they would actually re, you know, reroute where the air came in. So, I mean, that was the big thing was just put the nice, you know, big air cleaner on there for, for, for maximum filtration. And that's just what you did back then. And louver the hoods, that was a big thing too, you know? Yep. Back in the day, you, you did, you know, like the fuse boxes or, you know, the little fuse panels and and you broke up some of that to try to make it to where it was easier to route the wiring. So just technology has changed so much that, uh, you know, it makes things so much easier now. Nowadays, I mean, you, you lift up the hood and, uh, and it, there it is, you know. You know, the old technology stuff, the real rudimentary basic stuff is, is pretty much what I cut my teeth on. <laughs> and, and when Harry brought the Land Cruiser in, it was just, I, I fell in love with it. I just, because it really takes that eye, you know, of someone who's been around doing that stuff and, and the, just the cool different things that are on the Land Cruiser that, you know, back in the day when, when I was kind of, you know, starting to cut my teeth to see stuff like that even then was just super cool. You know, just see, and it's, it's pretty much like a time capsule, you know, you have someone that's like, what, you know, what did they do back then? And the neat thing is you just walk over to this and it really is like an homage to that first you know, iteration of guys that did start, you know, four dies that did start, you know, Rubicon and stuff. And, and that was the neatest thing for me working on it was just, it's like a, a time capsule. And it's, and, and that's the thing, you know, any of those projects you start remembering, you know, you've put a lot of love into this thing. So I couldn't imagine the different iterations and axles. And it's definitely, uh, I would say it's, for what it is, it's 
pretty awesome. You couldn't buy anything off the shelf on a, a gear racer change. Yeah. Well, Toyota Land Cruiser has had 410 and 370. Yeah, that was it. And nobody ever ordered a set of 370s because they didn't even know they existed. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Through some of my own experience, we just started doing uh, different experiments with trying to get cooler air inside because those hoods are so close. You start getting that fitment and that larger engine, and you've got the exhaust on both sides, so you're really starting to get a lot of that radiated heat coming in. And That's always been a problem, too. Right? By the yep. time you got it low enough, they weren't scraping them off and everything. And then it's right. all the way up in the engine compartment. <laughs> and, that, and that's a big thing, air intake temperature, especially with carburation. I mean, it, fuel starts to evaporate around 120 degrees, so you you start getting that carburetor a little over it over that then you start having vapor lock and it starts making to where it is harder to try to keep it from uh, you know sputtering at idle or overheating that's what I did we just looked at it and I saw that the heater box was removed so the the vent on the side we just made a, an enclosure for that and we just ran that cooler air and it makes a, a sizable difference definitely a bigger difference but back then it was just nothing I don't even know if the tubing would have been available to try to find some five inch mandrel tube, you know, mandrel bent tube. I, I don't even know if they would have that back then. You know, we, we did a few little different things with the fuel and and we did, uh, you know, it's got the aluminum radiator in it now and the, you know, that cool air intake really made it to where it was definitely more drivable. But uh, yeah, other than that, just the, the big block with that turbo funder, this now is really cool. It's just like you said, you pretty much got the low stall in there. So you just put it in gear and it just crawls over yeah. it. And it's definitely a torque monster. I remember seeing this, the, the plaques on the side of it when Harry rolled up and I'm like, how in the heck? You know, and you look in there and unlike the header, that driver's side header that you made, you know, to, so you could still have the steering in it. And, having the fender exit, you know, getting the exhaust out well, of the way. Well, I made that at a 120 wall tubing. It's here, it's like a, I, I must have put 50 of them on different cars. I'd be afraid to wreck it now. It's like a early 70s Bronco, you know? Right. I mean, they're neat and they work pretty good if you fix them up, but you hate to use, use them then, you know? So I hope you enjoyed this video. This is obviously a very special one for me. And if there's anything we missed that you want to know, you know what to do, comment below.